A one and a two and a chick a boom a chick. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you three stories that came directly from coaching calls that I've recently had with remodelers. This first one is called self-imposed deadlines strike again. Self-imposed deadlines strike again. What I have found is that we all, myself included, work better off of deadlines. I was talking to a client who said this to me the other day. You know what I did? I had a design and a proposal for a kitchen that I needed to finalize that wasn't close to being done yet. I called the client and made an in-person appointment with them for later in the week to present the design and proposal. And guess what? I got it done in time. If I hadn't called and scheduled the meeting, it would still be on my to-do list, but instead it is completed and we are closer to signing the final contract. Quote, unquote. What he's getting at there is when, when we have, when you go out and meet with some homeowners and if you leave that meeting and you don't have a clear next meeting set, the fact that you're so stinking busy, what ends up happening is what? It drags on longer than you would want it to more often than not. You have all the best intentions in the world to turn that proposal, that design around quickly. But if you don't have a deadline, it just lingers. Oh, I got to get to that. Oh, I need to get to that. This client, like a lot of my clients, this story is not uncommon. When you give yourself a self-imposed deadline, if you heard what he said, he wasn't even done with the design or the proposal, but he called and booked an appointment to present it to them for later in the week. When he had a deadline, when you have a deadline, when I have a deadline, we are going to get it done. We don't want to look bad. We don't want to call and say, oh, I haven't got that done. We get it done. So this idea of self-imposed deadlines is a huge one. You can reduce your cycle time, that time from when you meet with them until you sign the contract by giving yourself self-imposed deadlines. So if this strikes you, or if you have a, a prospect that comes to mind that you need to be getting back to, that you're not done with that design or proposal with, I want you to listen to this next sentence and then push pause. I want you to go pick up the phone or send that email, make that appointment with them and give yourself a deadline. And I'm going to, Bailey, if you're listening to this, she's the one that splices these together. Don't play that fun little <clears throat> that little intro music between this first story to the second story. Give some good dead air, like five seconds of dead air so that they can pause it, pick up the phone and go set a deadline. Two, 1,000. Three, 1,000. So this next story comes from a longtime client that I have from the mid Midwest. I guess, are they in the Midwest? I'm in Michigan. That's, that's mid, Midwestern. Um, he's out more in the plains of America, in Nebraska. Maybe that's Midwest, but I consider it more out west. So I titled this uh, story, want different results? Question mark. So I was doing a video call with this client recently. And um, by the end of the call, much to my coaching heart, uh, made, made my coaching heart happy. There were things happening quickly. And he's, he's been a client of mine for years. And early in the conversation, I saw that he had the news playing on his computer in the background. We do video conference calls, and I've done enough calls with him to know that his little computer in the background pretty much always has the news running. And I said, you know, hey, what's the news of the day? And and my client replied with, oh, you know, just so-and-so yelling at so-and-so and and vice versa. A lot of times it's just politics running back there. And then he said something important. He said, you know, I was thinking the other day, I have the news rolling in the background as I work every day, have the kind of sound turned down, but I can hear it. And I like to just know what's going on, but I think it might be dragging down my mood. It's always so negative. And I think even if it's subconscious, it brings me down. I think I replied with something like, you think, you think? Um, or something eloquent like that. But that led us into more conversation with the upshot being this truth. 
what you fill your head, your ears, and your heart with will definitely impact your day. What if instead of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through Facebook in the evening, you read a book? What if that 20 minutes of news watching was spent watching something motivational or encouraging, like the Remodelers on the Rise podcast? Um, then the piece of content that I created related to this, I, I took a couple pictures, uh, screenshots. Uh, one of my client kind of held this, held this, uh, his phone up and um, he said, hey, Kyle, take a screenshot of this. It's a monumental moment. And what it shows is delete Facebook question mark with the delete option. Uh, he deleted Facebook off his phone to limit the distraction of it. Uh, the other photo is him kind of with his, with his arms kind of crossing, making like, a, making like a strike through it, saying no more. And that was right after he turned off the news. So I, I love when coaching gets immediately implemented where he deleted Facebook off his phone, where he closed out the news. Um, I also followed up this coaching call by just sending some encouraging, motivational uh, videos, other things for him to watch and consume. Um, this guy named Albert Einstein, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he once said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. And my encouragement to you is to try something new today that will fill you up and encourage or help you versus bring you down. And be reminded what you fill your day with and what you listen to, what you consume has a major impact on your psyche and your attitude. Um, I also wrote when I created this content, this topic also reminds me of scripture found in Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. So I'll just leave that with you if you care to crack open the Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. I think you'll find the kind of the message in my thought here uh, correlates with that very well. So there's a thought for you. Hopefully it is an encouraging one and something that you, like this client of mine, can take quick, immediate action on. In this last story, I will title, Watch Out for Dog Pills. Watch Out for Dog Pills. This was from uh, mid, mid-November. I was actually getting ready to head out to Connecticut to uh, visit a longtime client out there. And I received a call while I was sitting uh, at the gate, and it was from a uh, longtime client of mine, Ben Templeton, with the wonderful Templeton Building Company here in Michigan. And he, uh, he said, hey, Kyle, I want to hear a story that has a lesson for your personal life and your business life. And I mean, I was all ears, that type of story. Those are like my favorite things. Wait a minute, a business story that also is applicable to life outside of work? I love it. So Ben told me this. He said, so I got up a little late this morning. I was cuddling in bed with our two boys. They had come in when they woke up and just jumped on the bed. We were chatting. We were hanging out. Um, I think his boys are like four and six or four and seven, something like that. Um, So he was kind of cuddling with them and then got up jumped in the shower, kind of rushed downstairs. He, he stayed in bed a little too long there, uh, rushed downstairs, got out his daily vitamin, got out his medicine, and got out the dog's daily pill. And he grabbed something to drink, and he took his medicine, the vitamin, and the dog's pill. This, of course, made me start chuckling as he was explaining this to me. Uh, And then Ben said, so the first thing I do is I call a past client of mine who's a veterinarian, easy for me to say, a veterinarian, and got his voicemail. I called poison control after they laughed at me. They told me I would be fine. Then I got a call back from my vet client. He's laughing too and reassures me I'll be fine. Then he says, you know, I've been meaning to call you about a bathroom project we want to get done. I'm listening to Ben explain this. I'm like, yes. And Ben said, you know, type, type all that up, do what you want with it, create some content. But the two lessons I learned this morning is one, pay attention. Don't rush so much. And two, reaching out to previous clients works. So reach out to past clients. So if you've heard me say it once, you may have heard me say it a few times, our previous clients 
are our most valuable marketing asset. And we can't do a project with for somebody and then not reach out to them at all. We need to be staying in touch with our previous clients. So this little fun story is an example of that, to reach out to previous clients. By the way, a great way to do that, check out remodelersautopilot.com. It's a really snazzy program that I offer to help you stay in touch with your previous clients consistently month in and month out. And it's only a dollar to try it out. Remodelersautopilot.com. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed these three stories from the trenches of coaching remodelers like yourself.